EV Comply, simplifying your charge point installations. Another week, another podcast. Hello to all you Leo babies. It is now the 5th of August and Friday, so let's see what's been going on this week. Starting the week with this news, BP is investing up to £50 million in a new UK EV battery testing centre. One of the world's largest contributors to greenhouse emissions, British oil and gas supermajor BP is getting into the EV battery business. It announced this week that it is investing to build a new state-of-the-art electric vehicle battery testing centre in the UK. BP has previously committed to invest up to 80 million in the UK's energy system by the end of 2030, but this new investment will be in addition to previous commitments and highlights the company's continued commitment to invest in the UK's energy sector. The new EV battery testing centre and analytical laboratory will be built at BP's global headquarters for its castral business in Pantburg, Berkshire, and is expected to be open by the end of 2024. Mini Research is showing that EV ownership is not always matched by the charging infrastructure. Mini's recent Electric Progress report for 2022 has revealed that UK EV charging infrastructure has grown from 15,116 charging stations in October 2019 to 25,927 in October 2021. That's a 72% increase. But the growth still trails the increase in EVs on UK roads, which has grown by 126% from 109,443 to 246,901 in that time. The report analysed 120 towns and cities across the UK and ranked for metrics including the number of charging points and rapid charging points, including the number of each per capita and square mile, as well as the number of registrated BEVs and PHEVs. These rankings were then collated to reach a final index score. Speaking of figures, investors have poured over £160 million into the UK lithium battery maker as we hit the EV boom. Investors have poured the money into UK-based lithium battery maker Neaxon as the electric vehicle boom boosts the value of the in-demand power source. We know this is a fast-moving industry, we know there's big backers and we also know it's going from strength to strength. Here's a big one for you. Stellantis has overtaken Tesla in Europe EV sales. Stellantis sold 105,413 BEVs in H1 2022 in Europe, compared to Tesla's 78,277. Still though, the Model Y was the best-selling EV with 39,969 sales. Stellantis is on a roll in Europe when it comes to electric vehicle sales, with the Franco Italio American Group overtaking Tesla in the first half of the year and closing in on the Volkswagen Group as well. The automotive group, born from the merge of France's PSA Group and Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, aims to become Europe's top seller of battery electric vehicles ahead of Volkswagen and Tesla. And if they continue at this rate, I think it's something they can achieve. BMW are heavily joining the EV pool. They aim to slash factory emissions to offset CO2 of EV production. The German firm also targets supply chain as a whole in a bid to reduce overall emissions by 20%. They've got a very firm plan and they say things are on track most definitely for 2030. We love statistics like this here at EV Comply. More electric vehicles have been sold so far in 2022 than in all of 2020, according to the latest new car sales figures. Data complied by not-for-profit green motoring consultancy New Automotive ahead of the official SMMT new car registration figures being released tomorrow. It's also revealed that while EV sales continue to grow overall, registrations in July were down significantly from the previous month. New Automotive's total of 11,240 electric passenger cars sold in July, a figure sourced from the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, marks a stark drop of almost 50% compared to June's 22,737. July's 2022 was the first full month since the government scrapped the plug-in car grant on June the 14th, but it doesn't really seem to be affecting things greatly. If you've been following the EV industry, you'll know that things have been building, 
but now we're at the point of sales. An EV technology group has agreed to acquire a specialist manufacturer, Fablink Group Holdings, in a deal valued at $38.8 million. North Hampshire headquartered Fablink has annual revenues of $110 million, and it is an established Tier 1 supplier to the automotive, transport and off-highway sectors, continuing leading global OEMS in its customer base. The transaction is valued at up to $38.8 million, with $29.5 million to be paid in cash for an initial 76% of Fablink. Fablink has 750 employers across the seven manufacturing sites and recently launched Streamline Automotive to serve the explosion in electric vehicle assembly and manufacturing demand. Now, this isn't new news per se. We all know this. EV charging stations that generate their own electricity could revolutionize electric car driving. Pioneering off-grid charging stations that offer power from on-site wind and solar plants are set to arrive in the UK by 2025. Groundbreaking pop-up charging hubs are set to be trialled in the UK by 2025 as part of a project to revolutionise electric motoring. The charging hubs will use energy storage technologies to provide green electricity to electric vehicles 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without taking a single kilowatt from the national grid. The five-year Fever project, a 6.6 million joint programme between four UK universities, will start work in September, developing charging hubs that deliver green electricity from their own wind and solar farms. In other news this week, UK EV startup Arrival may cut up to 30% of their workforce in a restructuring. UK EV startup Arrival may cut up to 30% of its workforce in the restructuring to help meet its business targets. Arrival said the move will enable it to start production of its Arrival van in the third quarter as planned. The restructuring, which the company said is in response to a challenging economic environment, aims at a 30% cut in spending to help meet its business targets until late 2023, using $500 million in cash reserves. In other business news, EV charging cables market size is to hit 3.55 billion globally by 2028. A premium study by the Insight Partners has found the EV charging cables market is expected to grow from 513.36 million in 2022 to 3.55 million by 2028. It is estimated to grow at a CAGR of 38% from 2022 to 2028. Connected Curb are doing well and they are going to provide on-street EV charging points for a pilot project in New York City. The UK-based electric vehicle infrastructure specialist Connected Curb is to deliver on-street EV chargers for a groundbreaking pilot project in New York to demonstrate how public access to EV charging can drive up EV ownership amongst the 50% of residents who park their cars on the streets. Connected Curb, which will receive funding to to install its EV charging points is currently exploring locations at Brooklyn to deliver a living lab to showcase how the chargers, which also support several lot and telecommunication applications such as 5G antennas, can support the rollout of other cutting-edge public access technology in the urban environments. Pilot planning and design is underway with the goal of launching by fall 2022. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you'll know that back in March, I mentioned that the police were doing a trial with electric vehicles. But sadly, they've come to the conclusion that EVs are not suitable for police responses, according to the PCC. The police force using the electric vehicles were struggling to respond to crime because the batteries kept going flat a police and crime commissioner has said. Gloucestershire Police Force has the largest full EV fleet in the UK, making up 21% of their 435 vehicles. PCC Chris Nelson said officers who drove electric vehicles had experienced problems finding recharging facilities in the country. He said the vehicles run out of puff and staff needed to charge police cars. Mr Nelson, who was speaking in a recent police and crime panel, said he was concerned about the operational impact electric vehicles were having on the force. It's a big shame this one, we were all hoping that that would work and go well, but in time we are sure that all police cars will be EV and these problems will no longer occur.
Now this is a bit of an odd one. A Tesla owner was napping while his car charged and he encountered a very rude awakening. A video was recently posted on Reddit revealing a pickup truck owner intentionally attempting to unplug a charging Tesla. The truck driver pulls right up behind the car, which is plugged in at a public charging station, gets out of the truck and starts pulling on the charging cable. The video cuts out before he's able to remove the cable. It seems to be increasingly common to learn that people are unplugging others' EVs whilst they're charging. While it's a rude and terrible idea, it may make sense that someone is in desperate need of a charge and all spots are occupied, with some cars potentially finishing charging and their owners nowhere in sight. This is one reason some EV makers are now charging idle fees. It's not quite EV etiquette, but I suppose it's a dog-eat-dog world. And finally, in our own EV Comply news this week, we have joined forces with Zapier. It will let you connect EV Comply with thousands of the most popular apps, so you can automate your work and have more time for what matters most. And better still, there is no code required. Please be sure to hit all our social media channels. It's EV Comply across the board if you wish to find out more and join Zapier. So that's all from me, your podcast roundup complete. As ever, we hope you all have a fantastic weekend and I'll be back with you next week.